Wow, how quiet. You guys are good listeners. Well, all right. Well, thank you to the River Falls High School pep band for getting the 80s theme started. Let's give them a huge round of applause. So welcome, and at this time, we would like to welcome Boy Scout Troop number 54 to do our flag presentation. If you are able, please stand. All right. Thank you, Boy Scout Troop number 54. And now, if everybody would give a huge round of applause for all our survivors as they enter. You guys are awesome, you look amazing. So welcome everyone to the 18th annual Relay for Life of Pierce County in River Falls. I'm Kelly Boros, I'm your local American Cancer Society representative. We have a lot of fun things planned this evening for our 80s theme relay. If you didn't know, this might be a clue. Uh, but I first, I, I know, well, some of you are still standing, and if you're able, please stand and remove your hat if possible, and welcome the pep band to do our national anthem. And the flag is over here.
Commonwealth High School Pep Band. And thank you again to Boy Scout Troop number 54. So with the 80s theme, I had a look at a glossary of 80s words, even though I am familiar with that decade. But I did find my new favorite word to be cowabunga. And I want you guys to know that word tonight because you know what it means? It means get ready, here we go, up for the challenge, righteous, and something really good. And that is what this relay is all about. Don't you agree? Let's hear it for a cure. How about that? If you are not already aware, it is the 30 year anniversary of the Relay for Life, which is where we got the 80s theme idea. And we've made a lot of progress in those 30 days or 30 years from when it was taboo to even say the word or talk about cancer. Today, two out of three people are surviving cancer. And while that is really good news, we still must recognize that we are still losing loved ones to cancer. And that is why we are here tonight, to celebrate, to make a difference, and save more lives. We hope to raise $175,000 tonight, and that is not an easy feat. But you know what? You guys have done it before, and we know you will do it again. And we are already at over $90,000, so that's amazing. <laughs> and just so that you really know that the money is making a difference, that type of money equates to funding many research grants that help with groundbreaking uh, therapy and treatments for people. 235 weeks at a Hope Lodge for a cancer patient and their caregiver for free. Over 1,700 free wigs for people, among many, many other things. So you guys are doing a lot. So can you say, Kawabanga? <laughs> All right, you guys are getting the spirit. So we are going to make some noise, noise tonight, and we're going to finish the fight and never, ever, ever give up until three out of three people are surviving cancer, and we will keep hope alive. And as a cancer survivor, as a cancer survivor myself, I can know, I can say on behalf of all of the survivors here tonight that we are forever grateful for all that you do. And I'd also like to give out to a uh, shout out to all the team captains that they work hard to bring the teams together and help the fundraising efforts. We have over 50 of them here tonight. So if you are a team captain, would you please stand and be recognized? Yeah. And some of them may already be standing, so thank you for that. And I'd also like to thank the many day of volunteers that we have at the Luminaria Table of Sign Launch and Entertainment all over the place. They've been wonderful and we're so grateful for them to help us with this totally awesome 80s party. But it really all started back in August with a fabulous committee. We have 29 committee members this year. Isn't that amazing? And they are all around in green shirts. You guys stand, please. If, well, there's a whole bunch over there. There's some up there, Lori's up there taking pictures. So if you get a chance tonight, tell them thank you and tell them that what a great night you're having tonight because they really do put a lot of time and effort to make this rewarding. And this is such a generous community and I know businesses get a lot, lot, asked a lot for a lot of donations for many good causes. So please take a moment to look at your program at the list of the donors in the program and around the silent auction table and thank you for the, their contributions. And we'd also like to give a special recognition to our corporate sponsors. Our gold sponsor this year is the River Falls Area Hospital of Alina Health and Virginia Piper Cancer Institute. Our silver sponsors are First National Bank of River Falls, Wisconsin Credit Union, Royal Credit Union, Spring Valley Healthcare Campus, and Family Fresh Markets. And our bronze sponsor this year is River Falls Municipal and Utilities. And then we also have a bunch of event sponsors, CNT Society, Associated Dentists and Orthodontics, Adderay Home and Health Hospice, Cashman Hill Funeral and Cremation Services, BMO Harris, Frisbee Architects, Is It To Be Marketing, and Minute Man Press. Let's give them all a hand. <laughs> so without further ado, I would like you to introduce uh, the event 
chair, well, excuse me, not the event chair is the wrong word, the queen of the relay. I was really hoping to have a crown for her, but I don't, but the queen of the relay, Jennifer. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Welcome, Dana Burns. Thank you, Kelly. I um, might not be as enthused about the 80s theme because I wasn't around in the 80s, Kelly. <laughs> wow, it is so awesome to look out and see so many friendly faces who came out tonight to support this fantabulous event. Kelly can have her own 80s word, and so can I. But mine is going to be fantabulous because this community is both fantastic and fabulous. I've been on the event leadership team now for about 10 years. I started when I was 12. <laughs> because I know too many people who have heard those dreaded words, you have cancer. We all have stories to share, and it is an honor to be among all of you who give, it, who give it your all to make a difference. So while I hate this disease, I stick with it because of all of you who come together as a community to celebrate, remember, and fight back. Can you believe Relay is 30 years strong this year? Can you imagine that 30 years ago, this idea was just a vision of one single volunteer, Dr. Gordy Klatt, a colorectal surgeon who ran a track by himself for 24 hours to raise money for the American Cancer Society in Tacoma, Washington. A fun little unknown fact is that he is from Stillwater, Minnesota, graduated from St. Thomas University, and got his medical degree from the University of Minnesota. Sadly, Dr. Klatt passed away last August from his own fight from cancer. So tonight we will honor him and his vision to find a cure. I know we can and will do it. Because River Falls is fantabulous. <laughs> and we know this is true because last year we were number one in the Midwest division, which includes Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, South Dakota, and number five in the nation for per capita fundraising. Give yourselves a hand and thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to one of our gold corporate sponsors, Dr. Tom Johnson of Alina Health, Virginia Piper Cancer Institute. Alina Health Virginia Piper Cancer Institute has been a huge partner for this year's Relay for Life of Pierce County, and we thank them for their tremendous support. Please welcome Dr. Tom Johnson to the stage. Thank you. It's very striking for me to look around and see all these people and see the number of people in this community that are affected by cancer. Adelina and Virginia Piper Cancer Institute, we're proud to be a part of this event in the fight against cancer. We're proud and happy to raise money to help fund research and medical advances. We're happy to support those fighting cancer now. We're happy to celebrate the survivors, and we're happy to honor the memories of those who aren't with us today. Just as we're all stronger when we fight together, our cancer program here in River Falls is stronger because of our commitment, the commitment we have from Alina Health and, and the, part, the partnership they play with us as a part of Virginia Piper Cancer Institute. We're not only accredited by the American College of Surgeons Committee on Cancer, but we meet the standards that are upheld by the Virginia Piper uh, Cancer Institute Board. That's an important part of health, Alina Health and that actually the standards are even higher than the American College of Surgeons Committee on Cancer. So you can be confident when you get your care at River Falls Area Hospital that we're meeting these standards. But really the part, the part of the, our care in here in River Falls that makes me the proudest is the way we're able to deliver this quality of care with a hometown touch. And you can see this every day in the people that care for you 
people that are here right now that are involved in your care, the infusion therapy and our cancer coordinators that, that provide, in many ways, they're the best part of our program. Thank you for taking the time to show your support really here tonight, whether you're a survivor, a uh, friend or family member of a survivor, or just somebody who's committed to help defeat this cancer. Uh, we really appreciate your help and have a good relay. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. We celebrate our survivors here tonight in the purple t-shirts. Cancer survivors are living proof that we are making a difference in the fight against cancer, and here tonight is one of them to share her inspiring story with us. Please join me in welcoming one of our 2015 honorary chairs, Haley Clevin. I sat in these chairs three years ago for my very first Relay for Life, just days after I found out I was cancer-free. I was at my weakest then, done with chemo and getting ready for radiation. Making my first lap as a survivor was unforgettable. The love and support in this room alone tonight and that first night is profound and I'm grateful to be here to be able to share my story. I know you all sitting in front of me know this exact feeling and can relive the moment immediately, the phone call. I received the call around noon on a Thursday. I drove home. I felt like I wasn't breathing like I am now. And when I finally reached my house, I took a few steps in the door and I fell to my knees. I almost felt the most comfortable to crumble in my own space, which is exactly what I did. My sister Polly was home at the time. And unfortunately witnessed this, but I'm thankful she was there to literally pick me up and calm me down from my hysterical sobbing. The, the call was hard, but delivering the dreadful news to my family afterwards was one of the toughest things I've dealt with. After the tearful conversations, not much time passed until they were all by my side. My dad wondering why it was me and not him. And my mom wanting to take my place. The support from my family was and still is indescribable, which is why I smile, because they know how grateful I am to have each and every one of them. Okay. <laughs> Please spell your last name and give your date of birth. K-L-E-V-E-N 8887. The question I always heard and it started to sound like, how are you? It was so constant. Eight chemos every two weeks, I got this. That's what I told myself. I lost a lot of my hair right before my second chemo. As much as it's only hair, like many say, it's still your hair and it's not on your own time. I shaved my head, instant relief flooded my body because I knew laying down that night wasn't gonna be so scary to wake up to a pillow full of my own hair. Or my shower wasn't gonna be so horrific to watch it fall out in clumps down the drain. Now when I hear people mention bad hair days, I just have to smile. Lemons, Bob Marley, Jolly Ranchers, ice chips, scarves, and the journal. These are just a few things that remind me of chemo. Lemons were my savior when it came to smells in the chemo room, even down to the plastic band-aid over my pore, it smelled horrible. So I would cut up lemons and literally stick my face in the bag to smell the fresh lemons through the five to six hours of chemo. It was a great tip from my Aunt Mel. Bob Marley music instantly calms me down and transports my mind to a tropical place sitting poolside with my cousins. So the sweet sound of reggae was a must during the hours of chemo. Thanks, Kenzie. Green Apple Jolly Ranchers would mask the taste of saline in my mouth when they accessed my port for my chemo cocktail. Ice chips, which I lived on during chemos to avoid mouth sores as much as possible. Colorful scarves played the role of my wig when I didn't have hair, 
these became quite a collection of my daily outfits, which I'm sure some of you still see me wear today. The journal. My sisters Katie, Polly, and my mom Cindy started a journal for me with all the days that I could cross off once completed. The journal also included a mini bucket list of things I wanted to do when I was done with my treatments, short messages from family and friends, and questions people wrote down. Any question from what's your first meal you're going to have when you feel better, to who is my favorite sister. That was a little tricky. <laughs> the journey kept my spirits up. Radiation, on the other hand, was not so fun on my mind or body. This was where the word fight became reality. Breathe in, hold your breath, breathe out. That was my focus. Radiation was, radiation was three and a half weeks for about an hour and a half each day. I had lymphoma in four areas, neck, collarbone, sternum, and right arm tissue. That translated into much more precise positioning and double checking that I was aligned just right to receive radiation. My patience was tested along with my willpower. Being buckled in with a face mask, only having two holes for my eyes, which is where the goggles were taped onto my mask. Shoulders, arms, and legs fit into a mold to ensure I would be as still as possible. I didn't even want to itch my arm. I was afraid we had to start all over. I knew I was in the best of hands, and that's what I remembered when tears would well up in my eyes laying on that table. I understood the encouraging phrase, keep fighting or you're such a fighter, because during radiation is when I felt like I was fighting the hardest to get through each session, even when you want to throw your hands up and say, I can't. Looking back, the complete journey went fast, but some of those days felt like a lifetime. Once I completed my radiation graduation, I was on the road to recovery and I jumped right back into life. Having no appointments scheduled, working normal hours, not taking a nap after I made the bed because I was just too tired, the possibilities were endless. Having gone through cancer at 24 has made my outlook on life much sharper. The small things I might have taken for granted and being able to enjoy. The sweeter moments are priceless. Not to mention my good luck charm, Tolly, who keeps me smiling. I'd like to give a nod to the unbelievable outpouring of support and generosity for all who reached out with their kind words on my CaringBridge site, cards sent, dinners made and delivered to my doorstep, and those un unplanned visits, which I didn't know I needed so much at the time. So I can't say thank you enough. The unspoken bond between survivors is hard to explain, but with simply a look and a smile, we have a mutual understanding for each other. Although every single journey and story is different, we each have been through a fight. It's still hard to say, I trip over the word then, and I stumble on it today, cancer. So yes, cancer is hard to say, but saying survivor is much sweeter and fulfilling. Wherever you are, Uncle Lance, that one's for you. And since we're all here supporting the people sitting in these chairs up front, I'd now like to close with a quote from my favorite doctor. Sorry, favorite doctor, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Thank you. for those words. All right, it's just about time to get this 80s party started. Just a few reminders. There's a schedule of events in your program and hanging around the gym. Also, a lot of teams have activities at their campsites, so take some time to check them out. Silent auction will close at 1130, and if there's any um, team bite back stuff, raise that price up. <laughs> Please stick around and pick up your items at that time. Otherwise, please pick up by 7 a.m. in the media, media room, or you'll get a call about 6.30, because <laughs> we have to get out of here early tomorrow for the Easter egg hunt. Finally, 
please gather back here by 9.50 p.m. tonight as we will have a luminaria ceremony at 10 p.m. featuring our other honorary chair, Steve Preisler. There will be a reflection lap following. Okay, let's get started. Survivors will walk the first lap. Everyone else will fan out around the track to cheer as they go past. Caregivers, please join the survivors for the second lap. After they finish the second lap, we'll ask all others to pack the track and join them in a lap before we settle into our regular walking schedule and kick off our entertainment and activities scheduled for tonight. If you'd rather not climb up the bleachers for survivors, please use the elevator behind the stage. We'll have some of our um, committee members helping you. Or if you'd rather have help up the bleachers, just ask for it. We will wait for you up there. So if you want to start heading up, if you need the elevator, it's back there. 